Welcome to another episode of Stay Safe. In our first episode of this series, you saw us prepare our crawl space to do a plywood shear wall installation. On this episode, we're actually going to install that shear wall and you're going to see the finished product. I'm Patrick Odellini, and welcome to another episode of Stay Safe. This is the second part in our two-part series where we're retrofitting this cripple wall behind us. And as you can see, we've already installed one of the plywood shear walls, and we're going to install another one today. Uh, in our first episode, you'll see that we actually provided some blocking here at the bottom to secure this plywood. We have bolted the foundation in accordance with the code, and we provided these brackets here at the top to provide the connection between the floor above and the wall here that we're trying to brace. I'm joined today by Thor Madison. How are you doing, Thor? Great. How are you, Patrick? Good, thanks. So Thor is a structural engineer who's been helping us out. And Thor knows just about, knows more about shear walls than anybody I've ever met in my life. So Thor, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have here in front of us? The plywood panels provide stability for the tall cripple studs, which would otherwise want to rack back and forth during an earthquake. So the, the nails along the edges of the plywood are going to absorb earthquake energy and re reduce the chance of the building falling to the ground. So as we get ready to cut our second panel here and put it in place, what else should we consider as we're getting ready? One thing about plywood is it is a natural material and so it will absorb moisture from the air. And in our foggy San Francisco climate, the panels can shrink uh, or swell depending on the moisture. And if they swell, they can buckle out away from the stud. So it's important to leave a slight gap between the panels. So before we install the next panel, what we can do is drive in a couple of nails that will be used as temporary spacers. And what size nails are those? These are 16 penny sinkers, which is pretty uh, uh, good spacing and, and we don't really need to be concerned with the exact nail size. Uh, we want to have about an eighth of an inch gap. Okay. So now when we, when we put the next panel up here, it's going to be held away from there, uh, the existing panel, and we can pull these out once we're done. Well, I know we got Peter Reed outside from T-Van Construction. Why don't we go outside and cut our second panel? All right. So now that we've got our plywood cut and we've installed our screens in the vent holes, let's go ahead and fit it up to see if we can get it in place. Look at that, a perfect fit. Why don't we get Peter in here to nail it down? So Peter did a great job with the nailing on this second panel, but it's also important to note that this work does require a permit from the Department of Building Inspection. So whether you're doing the work yourself as a homeowner or having a licensed general contractor do the work, make sure you have the proper permit before you start. In addition to the nailing, Thor, is there any other things you'd like to mention to our viewers at home to think about when you're talking about plywood shear wall installation? Really, the, the thing for a homeowner to remember is that the more plywood they can install, the better and that they, they definitely want to make sure that there are nails along each edge of every panel that they install. So you can't, you can't forget an edge and just uh, have it perform the same way. So here's another example how for very little money you could substantially reduce the risk of your house collapsing in an earthquake. So thanks again for joining us today, Thor. I'm Patrick Odellini, and stay safe. <laughs>